What's up, Vinyl Community? It's your boy, Chris. Kind of coming at you live from the man cave. Um, had another video in a couple of weeks. Wanted to take a uh, quick video, a quick amount of time, quick 15 minutes or so to uh, just talk to you guys about Christmas. I've seen a lot of your videos. A lot of you guys got a lot of great stuff. Um, a lot of you guys, well, like me, before the last two years, don't get records because nobody buys you many records because they don't want to risk making an ass out of themselves and buying you something you've already got. Well, like two years ago, not this Christmas, but the last Christmas, my wife had the great idea to get onto my Amazon wish list. It went through there and just bought me a handful, and it worked, and it worked great. And so this year, she sent my parents the same list because everybody, all, nobody knows what to buy me for Christmas. I'm one of those guys that throughout the year, if I want it, I typically just buy it. If I can make it work, I just buy it. But um, I wanted to take this video in this amount of time to really quickly show you guys some records and some music-related stuff that I got for Christmas as well as just tell you a couple stories. So I'll start off real quick. One of the things I got from my parents, um, 3LP, I think it's, I want to say it was the 30th anniversary. Maybe a 40th anniversary. I can't remember. Uh, live. Bob Marley live. Naturally. My favorite Bob Marley song ever is on this. The live version of No Woman, No Cry. It's three LPs. Bonus show. It's absolutely phenomenal. I've got an original pressing of the original album, obviously. But I love Marley so much. You can't go wrong. Um, another one that I had gotten. So a couple of months ago. I had had this one on pre-order, but Christmas started coming up, and uh, I started looking at the amount of money I was going to owe on property taxes. I had property taxes for three vehicles, for my house, uh, my job was shutting down for a week and a half uh, for, for repair, and I just started looking at all my pre-orders and just canceling, being like, I can't swing this right now. So, parents come through in the clutch with this. 4LP, 50th anniversary, Beatles White Album. Uh, once upon a time, I owned, I think, eight copies. Eight copies, I think, of this, of, of this album. Not this box, of course, but this particular album. I'm down to this being only my second now. I got rid of everything but my original mono press and this. And main reason that I want this, obviously, is because of the Escher demos. Um, which I've heard a lot of them on the Beatles channel on Sirius, uh, Sirius XM. And uh, I've really been impressed with what I've been hearing. So I can't wait to dive into that. Plastic's still on her. I hadn't had time. So I'm still, there are still things that, that, that my daughter got for Christmas that I haven't put together yet. Uh, just because it's so much. It's just so much. She got a, a swing set for Christmas. She got a bunch of tables for Christmas. She got all kinds of things that just required dad's time and dad's muscle to put together and I haven't even got through all of them but uh she's two so <laughs> it'd be like a different present every day for a while all right another one that I had had on my pre-order list that I again canceled because of the time of the year 6LP Jimi Hendrix Experience Electric Ladyland 50th Anniversary now, I've read some good things about this, and I've read some bad things about this, about the master and whatnot, I should say. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't give a damn, honestly, because I see a lot of it in here, a lot of extras in here, live at the Hollywood Bowl uh, 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 LP, and then there's a making of uh, Electric Ladyland early takes LP, and then there's a, a deep, uh, excuse me, a Blu-ray copy that's got a documentary of the making of the album, and... It's totally worth it for me. It was something I was going to go back and buy after Christmas, but thank goodness for me, I don't have to. A lot of people I know personally that I talk to have gone out and bought it and have said nothing but good things about it. I care about their opinions more so than I do all the uh, people who go on the internet just to look cool and you know whine about shit. So, but my number one vinyl-related thing that I got so much. I mean, when I when I canceled this pre-order for this, it damn near made me want to cry because I looked so forward to it. But I had to, again, things are more important. My daughter's Christmas, my family's Christmas. 
property taxes, bills, things were just more important. This is a very, very expensive time of the year. But I, so I had to cancel it, but I knew I'd go back for it. And so to see this on Christmas morning, John Coltrane, 1963 New Directions, five LP set. I've gotten two LPs into it so far. And guys, you know, most of this is, you know, stuff that I already owned in one way, shape, or form, but to have it come together in the complete box, and again, it's Coltrane, so I want it, pretty much. And to have it all together in one, you know, really cool box is awesome to me. Really cool slide cover. Not any uh, colored vinyl or any shit like that, which, that's not a knock on colored vinyl. I think it brings something cool to the table. But uh, a lot of times it also serves as just a gimmick to sell people to, to sell people the exact same thing. Make them think all of a sudden they have to have it. But uh, not in this case. It's really well done. It's the uh, unreleased album that came out earlier this year. Um, is in here. As well as uh, the album with Johnny Hartman's in here. Um, and just all kinds of stuff. Everything he put out in 1963 is on here and I, I'm just I couldn't be happier to have it so to pair along with that a good time to show you this it's not a vinyl but it's music related it's the house that train built by impulse records uh, written by Ashley Kahn who also wrote the book about uh, about a love supreme so that's where I got you know kind of my intro to it and you know made me want to you know look into it myself so I'm glad been wanting it for a while. I know that as soon as I open it, I know it's going down. I know I won't be able to put it down until it's over with. So thanks, Mom and Dad. And another one, the only one in the stack not from my Mom and Dad, is this is super cool. Um, it's a graphic novel on the great Thelonious Monk. And I wish I could read this. I could, I, I could pronounce this author's name. Yusuf Dowdy? I'm not positive. But it's called Monk. Thelonious, Panonica, and the, and the Friendship Behind a Musical Revolution. Super cool graphic novel. My friend Josh, at Take Me to Birch, on Instagram for any of you guys who want to follow along. Uh, super cool dude. Super kick-ass taste. Um, awesome, awesome guy. Actually celebrating his 30th birthday tomorrow. Super cool guy. Every year, he doesn't buy me records. He Even he doesn't know what all I have and don't have. He doesn't bother. But he knows I love my artist and he knows I love my books. And he's a big comic book aficionado. So he loves comic books. He loves graphic novels. And so as soon as he found out basically that there are graphic novels to be found on the musical genre everywhere, uh, that's been his MO every Christmas and birthday for me. So when, even when I see a cool one, I don't buy it because I'm like, you know, let me give it enough time. You know, let, Josh is really enjoying doing this for me. So, um, last year he bought me this one. It's the fifth Beatle on the, the Brian Epstein. It's the, the fifth Beatle, the Brian Epstein story. It's awesome. Uh, also last year, I think, I think this is Christmas. I think, um, Nick Cave was for my birthday. Super sweet. I love Nick Cave. And it might blow some of your minds because I know you guys are used to hearing me talk about jazz on here. But anyway. So everything I just showed you from my parents... Um, guys, I'm almost 34 years old. My guys, my parents make a huge, 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 huge freaking deal about Christmas. They always have. My dad is, monot is, is, is just flat out diabolical about it. Meaning he has an amount that he will spend on me, my brother, and sister. And it has to all be the exact same amount. Like he will keep buying shit for us until it adds up to the same thing. And if it gets to the end and everybody doesn't have the same, he, throw, he throws cash in. And he does the same thing for, then he's got an amount for my wife and my sister-in-law. And they have to have the same amount. This year, their amount was off by a dollar. So my dad literally dropped a dollar bill in my sister-in-law's bag. No bullshit. Because that's my dad. And he's always been that way. A couple of really quick stories. Uh, spoiler alert possibly coming up for any of you guys who still believe in Santa Claus or for any of you who might be watching this alone with a small child that does believe in Santa Claus. Maybe find a reason to get them out of the room because a fun story is coming about my parents here. Um, 
my mom and dad got married before my mom even officially walked across the stage in high school. She's 18, she completed all of her classes, gotten all of her credits, and was allowed to basically go home early. And she didn't have to return until she walked across the stage. By the time she walked across the stage, she was married to my father. True story. Um, you know, her, her mom and dad's only request has been when she walked across the stage, that she'd be allowed to have them introduce her as her maiden name. I'm not making this shit up. It's the only thing I've ever heard similar to this. And when I was growing up, and you know, even to this day, all my friends, you know, were, were children of divorce. Their parents were divorced. Not my parents. Uh, not divorced. Never been divorced. Uh, they've been together 40 years. They've been married 35. They still argue about the dumbest shit ever. Ever. Like a 30-minute argument about where the freaking remote control is. I mean, it's retarded. <laughs> Flat out. But they make it work. And they always have. And they've done it for their family. And what keeps them going the most is, is their love for each other. But more so than anything... As much as they love each other, either one of them would drop kick the other one off the bridge if it meant saving me, my brother, or my sister. And I think they both understand that. But growing up, so my mom and dad get married. Dad gets a job, job offer in Charleston, South Carolina, which is where I was born. Um, so they move down there, no family, no friends, anything down there to this one-bedroom trailer park. And I'm born. Um... I'm born down there. My dad's working 60, 70 hours a week. My mom was a night manager at McDonald's. Basically quit that to stay at home when I was born to watch me. So dad's putting in all the hours he can just to keep us living in a trailer park. And we were poor. We were freaking dirt poor, but we had each other. And my earliest memories of vinyl stem from way back then because my mom and dad, again, I've told you if you guys have watched the entry videos, had this big cabinet with uh, the speaker and this amp and everything like that. It had the 45s and the vinyl records that now all belong in this room. And that's what we had. We had music and I learned how to do everything super early in my life because my mom's one and only focus was me. I'm all she had to worry about. We just had each other. And times were rough and my brother comes along 18 months later, not planned <laughs> at all. So there's my mom and dad, dirt poor, living in Charleston, South Carolina, Monk's Corner, South Carolina, right outside of Charleston, with two toddlers. So, but they made it work. And eventually dad gets, you know, a job offer, you know, Blair, Newberry, you know, Winsboro. My mom still works in Winsboro, South Carolina, actually, the same company. And, but one thing that I can tell you is despite being dirt poor, we always had the best Christmases ever. They might not have been able to afford to buy us something every time we went out, but we had the best Christmases ever. I mean, I can remember a Christmas getting a, you know, a go-kart and multiple bicycles and a brand new video game system and everything. And my mom and dad, this was back in the days of layaway. So they would spend the entire year putting stuff on layaway for us, and they would hustle like hell to get that shit paid off before Christmas so that on Christmas morning we had everything. I don't know how they did it. And I tell you all of that to tell you this. Um, when I was, I'm going to say seven or eight, I'd already had my speculations because a lot of my older cousins were already telling me Santa Claus wasn't real, but I didn't want to think my parents were lying to me, which again is not what you're doing, by the way, if you're letting your kids believe in Santa. You're just letting them be kids. Um, but I remember a particular Christmas that outside, with the, in the addition to all the insane shit that they bought us, um, and it was insane this year as it always was, my dad decided to go up and above above and beyond and I feel so sorry for him actually in retrospect that he didn't pull this off it was, it was just such a well thought out idea dad takes the truck goes in the backyard makes a few tracks so that he can tell my brother and I that that's where Santa landed his sleigh <laughs> now keep in mind now me and my brother are South Carolina country boys even at that age we know what the hell tire tracks look like you know we know any if it's got four wheels on, if it's got wheels on it, we know, we can look at the tracks and tell you what it is, even then. Because we're South Carolina country boys. But, um, 
So he did that. And then immediately pulled and said, hey guys, you know, look at, you know, this is where Santa's sleigh light. It was all just too obvious. It was too convenient. He walked us right out there to it. Me and my brother are just looking at each other. Because in our moments, we're like, Dad, these are, these are car tracks. And why did you bring the truck around here? We don't understand. So it wasn't making much sense. And I think Dad could tell that we weren't buying in. So he takes us inside. It shows us a note, a handwritten note from Santa Claus. Look, Santa Claus left this for you guys too. And we open it. And nobody on God's green earth writes but like my dad's uh, guys. Nobody. Nobody writes like my father. It's like doctor slash lawyer slash just men in an unbelievable hurry chicken scratch. I mean, I can make it out, but nobody writes like that, man. Let me tell you. So it's all in my dad's handwriting. I think maybe they'd have been better off if he let my mom write it, possibly. My mom writes like a normal person. <laughs> but then we start looking at it, and then we're looking at each other, because, again, we're old. we know what the hell my dad's handwriting looks at. So I can remember just not wanting to do it, but looking up at my dad and saying, Dad, there, there is no Santa Claus, is there? And him just, oh, yes, and he's, he's not giving up on it. Oh, yes, son, yes, yes, there is. That's his note, and those are his sleigh tracks, and... I said, Dad, those are your tire tracks from your truck. I said, and you wrote this note. I can tell. It's okay. Just be honest. Is there a Santa Claus? And that's when he looked at my mom, and my mom looked at him, and right there he decided to lay it on us and confess that indeed there was no Santa Claus, that he and mom had been doing all this stuff. I, I tell you all that because I'm sure you're all wanting to know why I'm talking about this shit on the vinyl channel. I tell you all that to tell you that Christmas has always meant so much more to me after that. Because for a lot of kids, when they find out Santa Claus isn't real, they start thinking that their parents lied to them. And, oh, the Easter Bunny isn't real. So they start thinking their parents lied to them and they feel deceived. Not me. Because I knew how damn dirt poor we were, guys. I knew how dirt poor we were. And to me, that said, my parents are going out all year long busting their ass to make a memorable day for me and my brother. And to this day, it still makes me tear up when I think about all the sacrifices and everything that they've made to make sure not only that my, you know, me and my brother, again, I told you how poor we were, that we always had a roof over our head, which we always did. Now, the roof might have been small as hell, but it was there. It was over our head. And the food might have been skimpy back then, but it was on our table. We never go on without, guys. We were just poor. We couldn't afford to go out and eat as a family. That wasn't an option. But from that day forth, I always had such a, a newfound respect and love and admiration, not only for Christmas itself, but for my parents, who I already adored. If you couldn't tell me anything bad about my parents, I'll fight you. So you already couldn't do that. But guys... They continue to do it, and they're no longer poor. They're not, they're not poor anymore. My mom and dad busted their ass for years, and now they, they live a pretty, pretty comfortable life. By the time my sister come around, there's an 11-year difference between me and my sister. By the time she came around, my sister was never poor. By the time she came around, we were able to afford to go out and eat as a family, stuff of that nature. But anyway, so I just want to say that in addition... To all of that stuff that I just showed you, by the way, that my parents got me. In addition to all of that, I also got like five or six music t uh, band t-shirts and all kinds of other things. And my mom and dad are freaking awesome. And they always have been awesome. And they're everything that I want to be as a person and everything I want to be as a parent. And sometimes I get sad and wonder, will I ever be able to do all of this for my daughter Ramona? It's like, I don't know. I don't know if I will be able to or not. Um, but I'm going to try my damn best and it's going to be a large part is going to be the lessons that were bestowed upon me from my mom and dad at such an early age and the lessons that they continue to bestow upon us. They don't do all of this for us on Christmas because they feel like that we need it. They just want to do nice for us. And it's a big deal to them and it will always be a big deal to them. And because it was always a big deal to them, it's always been a big deal to me. So, to mom and dad, from my very young age of running around the house, cleaning up with that five to six foot tall stereo, 
turntable, listening to old 45s, listening to Come On Eileen, uh, and Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson with you, Mom, and uh, for Dad, for all the memories of listening to uh, the Eagles in classic country, and Gene Watson, and uh, in, in, in Journey, and most importantly for me, Paul McCartney in Wings. Uh, from all of that, it's all inspired. I don't. I probably don't have all of this if I didn't grow up in the house that I grew up in. If I didn't grow up raised the way I was raised. Um, basically, mom and dad, I just adore you. And you two are the greatest people ever. And I love you both with every beat of my heart. And uh, I can only hope to ever be half the parent that you both are. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever see it. I know you've seen several of my videos which is shocked to me. I don't know if you'll ever see this one, but believe me, I'll tell you all of these things to your face. Um, this is just to share with everybody else. Um, thank y'all so much. I'm getting ready. As soon as I close up on this video, I'm getting ready to continue to dive into some of these awesome new records you guys got me for Christmas. So to all of you guys uh, in the vinyl community, to all of my subscribers, to everybody I subscribe to, I hope you guys had a freaking wonderful Christmas filled with filled with great memories, filled with wonderful people. I hope you got all the records you were looking for. Um, I hope you got the things you were looking for. Uh, but more importantly than that, I hope you had somebody to share a hug with or a kiss with or a memory with or a laugh with or, you know, a drink with or anything. I hope you caught up with people you hadn't seen in a while. I hope you I hope you laughed. I hope you loved. I hope you continue to laugh and love through the, and through 2019. I'm not a big New Year's resolution guy. I just want to live every day like it's the first day of the year. Uh, it's never too early of a time to make a change in your life if you think it's going to be a positive one. No need to wait 365 calendar days. So I hope you guys enjoyed all of that, and I hope you had a wonderful Christmas, and I hope you have a happy new year. Um, just in case you don't see a new video from your boy until after the new year, I just want to say to you guys, peace and love, happy new year from your boy at Tunes from the Man Cave. Keep dropping that needle, you guys.